Hi there, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to create smooth 3D slideshows using Fusion tools in DaVinci Resolve. To make things easier, I've also created a template that simplifies the workflow for making these cool slideshow effects directly in the edit page. With this template, you can effortlessly create seamless 3D slideshows and customize the animations without needing to dive deep into Fusion composition. And you will find the download link for the template in the video description below. Once you've downloaded the package, simply unzip it and double-click the DRFX file to install it into DaVinci Resolve. First, Let's dive in and get started on creating your very own 3D slideshows from scratch in DaVinci Resolve. Here are the six images we will use for this demo, you can also use video clips. Select all of them, right-click, and create a new Fusion clip. This automatically creates a clip in the media pool. You can click the title to rename the clip, for example, 3D Slideshow. Right-click the Fusion clip on the timeline and open it in the Fusion page. The six media input nodes are merged as different layers in the composition and connect to the media out. Select all the merge nodes and delete. Disconnect the media out. We will add these images to a 3D scene for a 3D slideshow effect. From the toolbar, Drag and add six image plane 3D nodes to the editor. Connect the media in nodes to the image planes as material inputs. Add a merge 3D node and a render a 3D node to the editor. Connect all the plane nodes to the merge node and render a node to the media out. We now see the 3D scene rendered in 2D format and shown in the right side viewer. Drag the Merge 3D node into the left viewer panel to activate the 3D view. Select the Merge 3D node, click the Camera 3D button in the toolbar to add a camera to the scene. Make sure the Camera node is selected. In the 3D viewer, pull the camera back to show the image. Go to the Inspector, in the Transform tab, check Use Target option. This will keep the target point in the center of view, no matter where you move the camera. Select each image plane node, reposition the images. OK, this looks good. Now we can animate the camera to show the images one at a time. Select the camera node and move playhead to the beginning. In the inspector, mark keyframes for translation XYZ and target XYZ. Move the camera backward to create distance from the images. This will be the starting view of the slideshow. Move the playhead forward by 30 frames. Move the camera forward to focus on the first image. Make sure keyframes are marked for all translation and target parameters. Click this pin icon to keep the camera node always available in the inspector. Select the first image and switch to the Transform tab. Copy the plane's XYZ values to the camera's target XYZ. Advance another 30 frames. Mark keyframes. This will create a one second hold between the previous and current keyframes. Again, going forward 30 frames. Insert keyframes. Select the next image plane node and go to the transform tab. Copy the plane's XYZ values to the camera's target XYZ. Reposition the camera to show the image.
moving forward another 30 frames. Mark keyframes for the translation and target values to keep the image in the view. Repeat these steps to add keyframes for other images. Set keyframes to move the camera to the next image. And mark keyframes with the same values to hold the image. OK, we now have done the keyframes. Click this icon to unpin the camera 3D node from the inspector. We can also open the spline editor to smooth keyframes. Check Show Only Selected Tool. Select the camera 3D node. Click Zoom to fit. Control A to select all keyframes. Click the Smooth button or press Shift S to smooth. Play the composition. Because we smoothed all keyframes, the image won't stay still in the middle of the slideshow. To fix this, select the keyframes in the middle, press Shift L or click the linear icon. OK, now it's good. If you want to adjust the keyframe timing, you can open the keyframe editor. Similarly, show only selected tools. Click zoom to fit if needed. For example, if we want to extend the duration of animation between images, we select the keyframes on the right side, drag and move. Repeat for all transitions. You may have noticed the playback is very slow and laggy, that's because the cache is not ready. To ensure smooth playback, you can cache the Media Out node to disk. Right-click the Media Out node and select Cache to Disk. And click Pre-Render button. Wait for the cache to complete. To have a more realistic effect, we can apply Depth Blur to the images. Select the Renderer node. Go to the Inspector, include the Z channel in the Output channels. In the Node Editor, press Shift Space to open the Tool Selection window. Find and insert a Depth Blur node after the Renderer node. In the Inspector, increase the Blur size. Change the Z scale to 1. Select both Camera and Depth Blur node. Move to the second keyframe where the first image is in focus. Click on the Sample button, hold and drag to the image in the viewer, Release button to pick the value. This sets the focal point value to the Z channel picked from the image sampling point. Mark a keyframe. Go to the next keyframe, mark a keyframe for the focal point. Continue to the next keyframe. Sample the value. Repeat these steps to add keyframes accordingly based on the images in focus. Alright. We now have done the 3D slideshow composition using Fusion 3D tools in the Fusion page. It's not hard, but it's really time consuming and requires patience. As I mentioned earlier, I've created a template for this effect. Once you download and install the template in DaVinci Resolve, you can find the template in the effects panel. In this example, we will create a 3D slideshow for these eight images on the timeline. Like we did earlier, select all images and create a fusion clip. Apply the essential 3D slideshow effect to the fusion clip. By default, the number of images is set to 6. Due to performance concern, this is limited to a maximum of 12 images. In this case, we change to 8 and click Apply Changes. Please note that this effect is highly resource-intensive due to the presence of multiple layers and the complex animation computations required for rendering a 3D scene. As a result, playback can be quite laggy and slow if caching is not enabled. To ensure smooth performance and efficient editing, please enable caching before previewing or rendering the final output. To enable caching, 
Set the render cache option to Smart in the playback menu. And manually enable the cache for this fusion effect if needed. Right click the fusion clip and choose Render Cache Fusion Effect Filter. Check Essential 3D Slideshow. You can play the clip to pre render the cache. Wait for the cache to complete. Once the cache is complete, play the clip. And we got a nice, cool 3D slideshow. No fusion, no keyframing, just a few clicks. We can also add a background underneath, such as a paper background, and increase the saturation slightly. Then, apply a drop shadow effect to the slideshow fusion clip. Wait for the cache to finish. Play the clip. And it looks great. If you want to have a slideshow with your own customized animation styles, the template offers many settings that you can adjust to match your project needs. For example, you can change the strength of depth blur. Adjust the overall image size with the focal plane option. Increasing the value is like pulling the camera back. You can use this to review and adjust the overall image positions with all images in view. Or crop the images with the crop width and height parameters to change the image ratio. Add a border and change the border color. To have a smooth and informative editing experience, we can click the Customize button. In this mode, we will use numbered panels instead of the original images, which not only performs much faster, but also provides indications of the images we are working on. However, the depth blur and border settings will not impact the appearance of the panels. In the Animation Setting group, Animation time controls how long the animation runs from one image to the next one. The default is set to 30 frames. Pause time defines how long the image stays in view, it's also set to 30 frames by default. Animation offset controls when to start the animation, you can increase the value to delay the slideshow. The Shake Strength option allows you to control the intensity of the shake effect added to the slideshow. Set it to zero to disable the shake effect entirely. A higher value will make the slideshow appear more dynamic and lively. Use the camera start settings to determine the initial view for the slideshow. Go to the beginning of the clip to see the starting viewpoint. Then, adjust the camera position to your preference. Next, we have this button to toggle the image option mode. The default setting is the auto mode, which automatically opens and closes the image settings according to the current playhead position. This makes it easy to adjust the target view for the current image. However, when render cache is enabled, this might open and close image sections on its own, even if the playhead is not moving. So in this mode, I would turn off the cache to avoid that. Play the clip. Stop playback if you want to change the view. Let's say image 1, we can change its position. When you are done with the current image, resume playback. And pause if you want to change the view. For example, when image 2 section is open, the previous section automatically closes. This keeps the inspector organized and focused, reducing distractions. We can change its view slightly to the side and move the camera a little back. You can repeat these steps to customize the views to your preference.
If you want to adjust all image positions, you can click the button to enter the manual mode. And go to the beginning of the clip, reset the camera start position to see all images. Now you can open the image settings at any point, regardless of the playhead position. After customizing the views, play the clip to review the result. If satisfied, click the Apply Changes button to enter live slideshow mode. Enable the render cache and wait for it to complete. Congratulations, you now have your own customized 3D slideshow. If you don't mind working in the Fusion page, you can utilize the Fusion 3D viewer to arrange the images. Click this icon in the inspector to open the effect in the Fusion page. Double-click the Slideshow Effect node to open the group. Drag the Merge 3D node into the left viewer to activate the 3D viewer. For smooth editing, click the Customize button to enter editing mode. Now you can select image panels in the 3D viewer and visually move them around with the on-screen controls. All right, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and find the template useful. Please feel free to leave any comments or suggestions. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.